going you guys? It's your boy Jamal. I'll be back in with Views of the Heart. And today we got a F32 2015 BMW 428i. Now what that means exactly is it's uh, F32 is a tragic designation. There's an F32, F33, and F36. F32 is the coupe, F33 is the coupe convertible, and F36 is the grand coupe or the four door of the four series. Um, 428i is basically, 28i is basically the uh, entry model or lowest uh, powered engine because this is packing a two liter inline four uh, turbocharged, which is pushing 240 horsepower and 255 pound feet of torque. The engine is called the N20, which replaces the previous generations, the E90 generation, um, naturally aspirated inline six, which produced 230 horsepower and 200 pound feet of torque. So, as you can see, the torque, especially with the turbo, is a twin scroll turbo, it's a single turbo vehicle, um, produces 55 more pound feet of torque and just about just uh, you know, depending on configuration, you know, the, uh, some 28i models have any between 10 to 15 more horsepower. So, again, BMW downsized, many car manufacturers downsized the size of their engines in order to, um, you know, improve gas mileage and overall be less impactful on, you know, the environment with carbon uh, gas emissions. Um, I don't know though, I'm personally not a fan of four cylinders. Um, for my people viewers who know that, I really am not a fan. Um, I have come across some decent four cylinder engines before. For instance, when I uh, test drove my uh, 2016 um, Lexus IS 200T F Sport, that was a relatively, you know, decently smooth engine, as well as the Mercedes. Um, what was it, the C250, which was a 1.8 liter uh, inline four, which is also turbocharged, and this is a two liter turbocharged engine, which is producing a, quite a little bit more horsepower than the uh, Mercedes. So with that said, this is this N20 engine, uh, turbocharged inline four, it's made it to an eight speed automatic. This vehicle is rear wheel drive, it is not extra drive, and it's pushed on a curb weight of 3,500 pounds. So it's pretty light, it's pretty compact, you know, it should be pretty fun to drive, but what many people hated about this generation of the BMW was BMW wanted to appeal more mainstream, which is understandable, you know, they wanted to protect their bottom line and produce more money. But by catering to the mainstream people, BM a lot of people think that BMW strayed away from its roots of being a driver-centric, fun, sporty type vehicle, especially with the introduction of turbocharged uh, engines and straying away from naturally aspirated inline sixes, which BMW was basically built upon, and that's the precipice of BMW. A naturally aspirated inline six is quintessential BMW, just like many people think so when it comes to the BMW, which is the timeless, probably anyone who thinks about BMW or knows anything about BMW M models, probably the first M that comes to most people's minds is the E46 BMW M3, which produced, which had a 3.3 liter naturally aspirated inline six, pushing 333 horsepower. So, which also revved to 8,000 RPMs, which is insane when you think of it. A naturally aspirated inline six, screaming to 8,000 RPMs, just being overall fun to drive. This has not only a thousand RPMs less, it has almost 100 horsepower less, and obviously these are two completely different vehicles, but I'm just trying to give a little bit of background in terms of why people have been so discouraged by the F generation of BMW, whereas previous generations used to be so fun, so sporty, so everything that one could possibly want, especially since prices have increased, the technology inside has increased immensely. The interior design aesthetics are definitely pleasing to the eye. The materials used are, you know, definitely comparable to its other uh, rivals and within its class, you know, like Mercedes, Audi, Lexus, etc., and so on and so forth. But the main thing was what made BMW stand out from its competitors was it was always fun to drive. It was never the fastest in the, in the straight line. It was never had, you know, breakneck speed or anything like that, like, you know, your C63 AMGs, and etc. But it always was fun to take on a back road and carve out a uh, canyon and drive and sporty and just overall, especially when it was included with a six-speed manual, just overall feel very connected to the road and enjoy the experience of you're getting from driving pleasure. All of that has been really much subdued in this generation. Now, to be frank, I haven't really driven an F-Series generation car before. I mean, I've driven my uh, friend, shout out to you, Ben, uh, F80 M3, I mean, sorry, M4, 
and but that was only for like 10 15 minutes but thank you so much for that opportunity hope to do a review with you again very soon um on your gorgeous alpine white i believe it's alpine white no it's actually should be a somewhat mineral white anyway it's a white gorgeous m4 and i know the build you're currently doing is going to be extraordinary so i can't wait to see it when you're done but continuing on with this 2015 428i, it's hard to say exactly from my point of view or my perspective at this moment because I haven't really experienced what this car is capable of offering. But with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump on the inside and show you, let me show you what this bad boy is all about. Let's go ahead and jump on in, let's go. Let's go ahead and jump on inside this bad boy. So let's break it down. This is a pretty lovely interior. Honestly, like I said, although I love BMW, I'm not going to be, good, I'm not going to be biased. It's not as good or as appealing aesthetically as the IS, Lexus IS F Sport interior. Um, I feel like there is more extended use of leather in the F Sport and overall it's just a little bit more pleasing. I feel like the interior here aesthetically is a little bit bland. I mean, Almost every interior is bland compared to the Lexus IS F Sport, and that's honestly because Lexus broke the rules with that car in the sense that they did not want to develop and build a car in which it conformed to traditional car aesthetics. Obviously, the design is way out there. The interior is going to be way out there. The interior looks absolutely nothing like the previous generation Lexus IS compared to the you know like the 2015 plus and I think that's that's a very good thing because over here in BMW I feel like they kept it a little bit too traditional it still feels like an E90 to me a little bit in the sense that the layout is familiar and everything of that sort it feels again the S4 felt like it was more spelt and built around the driver this felt like it's built around just for the cabin but what I mean by that it's not a bad cabin by any means it's just like I said, I try and call things like it is. I try not to be biased. I try and be completely honest when I do car reviews because, like I said, this is just my channel is car reviews from the heart. I try not to secret code things. I try and give an honest, genuine opinion coming from myself. I can only speak for myself, but these are my thoughts. These are my opinions. These are my honest truths to me. And with going along with that further mantra, again, this interior is not bad. It does have, you know, nice leather, and as you can see around the, um, Interior trim, I believe this is like a red line edition, red line sport, something along those lines, um, sport line. When BMW first introduced these cars, they tried to introduce, you know, like luxury trim levels, a different sort of trim levels. And, you know, it, I think that's, uh, I think it's stupid, um, to be to be quite honest. Like, it's, it's something that, um, they should have just kept it normal and between you know, like normal and M Sport. It's, that should be the two different shading factors. There should be no other difference there. There, There's no reason to really, or you know, M Sport package and keep something like along those lines, but they tried to add like normal or like luxury and executive and sport line package. And I feel like as if, again, BMW is losing the way of their original customers. Their customers but that I've carried this brand for so long have been accustomed to sporty vehicles. There should, there's no need to complicate things. Just give me a sporty car. That's what I look to BMW for. BMW, uh, Audi is not a sport car. They they have nice vehicles, but they're not sport cars. Audis don't handle well compared to BMWs and even the AMGs. That's just the truth. I, I In my personal opinion, I don't think Audi really offers sport cars in terms of handling. They offer very fast cars, they offer very beautiful looking cars, they offer very extensive luxury cars, but they don't really offer sports cars like the way, you know, BMWs do. And, and to be quite honest, none of the Germans' uh, vehicles really offer sports cars on the level of Porsche. Porsche is clear cut and above the king as of right now in terms of offering great sport vehicles with infused luxury and you know i feel like bmw and mercedes and all of them are all trying to play catch up to the uniqueness that porsche offers an extremely lavish interior with um out of this world driving experience compared to most vehicles 
Granted, most Porsches are out of most people's price points and you know, it's hard to offer everything that Porsche does both lavishly and driving dynamic wise and at the same time cater to, you know, or water your brand or whatever you want to classify it and cater to, cater to the masses. Porsche does not cater to the masses. There's no if, ands, or buts anyway to really, um, sorry, it's had to. Sorry, I thought I was just uh, cracking my leg. I was about to go crazy. But with that being said, it's a tall order to for any for any car to measure up to a Porsche uh, sports car. And you know, with that being said, I feel like BMW had a, a very good niche in the market of being able to offer relatively, relatively speaking, anyway, affordable luxury infused sport vehicles or sporty vehicles and again as i mentioned bmw with, with this generation straight away from that it feels like it's like again the just overall design layer just doesn't really feel catered to the driver it feels a little bit more open a little bit to you know the the front two passengers as opposed to the driver most people beforehand when they chose the bmw they chose it because they wanted a more transient and responsive vehicle a more handling-esque vehicle, a more sporty vehicle compared to its, uh, you know, its contemporaries, compared to its rivals. And, you know, I can't really speak on that yet because, like I said, I haven't really driven this car. But, again, with going with the, um, everything else that's offered in these vehicles, it has a sport, comfort, and echo, and sport plus mode. And, you know, with that going along, you know, like I said, I really, I'm really interested in seeing how these different modes will change the driving dynamics of these vehicles. The interior is pretty, is pretty decent, you know. Like I said, it's not like oh my god, amazing. Like I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you guys, but it's you can definitely see quality. It's definitely far better than your Econo boxes and anything like of that nature. And like I said, this car, brand new, does start at base price of forty-four thousand dollars, and with options can quickly raise into the fifty-four, fifty-five thousand dollar range. Now. In that price range, I think you should definitely look at a BMW M2, in my personal opinion, as, as opposed to a 420i. And like I said, this is aesthetically is a very lovely looking vehicle. This design language is very good looking in my opinion. I feel like BMW hit a very decent sweet spot of being futuristic instead of being revolutionary when they went evolution and it completely changed up the game. Instead of just being iterative, they definitely changed up the, their design language game up, but while still keeping their the quintessential BMW kidney grills in the front, every BMW from, you know, the time this brand has been conceived has always kept the kidney grills, and that is something they need to keep in whatever design language or whatever design they come up with next. Keep the kidney grills, that is BMW, that is BM, that is BMW. No one can sit here and say that any other car maker has incorporated one single aspect of their design language throughout every generation like BMW has. Maybe Porsche with like their eggshell type um, uh, headlights, but even even that's a little bit of a far cry. <laughs> yeah, I see you. <laughs> um, but like I said, let me go ahead and uh, like the um, back seats are pretty much useless. It's really just one plus one. Um, but other than that, let's go ahead and quickly drop into the driving portion and see what this bad boy's cracking about and explain to you a little bit more while I'm driving. So let's go ahead and get it. So what's this like driving a 2015 BMW F32 428i? Well, I have it in comfort mode. As you can see, I got Superman Rob right here. See the movie shot again once again? Yeah. <laughs> Show a little bit more liveliness, Robert. Oh, I'm sorry. I just came back from lunch. <laughs> He's comatose. Oh, but right now I have a cover mode and I can honestly say I do not like the feeling at all. But I'm gonna give it a little uh little, little pull here and see. Well what you about? <laughs> it's um it's yeah. decent. You know it's it's alright. I mean, it's on Eagle, which one? I mean, it's not a 435. Excuse me. Sorry. I know not everyone can have a car like me. No, I'm just <laughs> but. Everybody that has that for, hopefully, you guys. <laughs> if it's uh, not bolt on, they won't. But, um, like I said, I'm just trying to focus here. You know, like I said, this is not my car. Shout out to Carlux. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, this was a generation where BMW went from hydraulic power steering to electric power steering. And like I said, this is in comfort mode right now. And 
it's not giving me the feedback that I want. I, I'm not a fan of this steering at all. It's very vague, it's very loose, it's very... It's not BMW, this is not BMW steering. But like I said, let me preface that by saying I am in comfort mode. So I am very interested in seeing how this steering could change once I click it into Sport or Sport, or Sport Plus. <laughs> but like I said, driving this on a daily basis in comfort mode or comfort steering is not ideal for me personally. It's not giving me enough feedback. It's This is not what BMW is about. This is mainstream BMW. This is hipster BMW. This is BMW trying to accommodate every possible buyer as opposed to focusing on what carried BMW to where it is. The purists, the driving, the people that care about driving dynamics, the people that care about a good driving, good handling, good feedback vehicle. And this is, so far, is being disappointed to me, is being very disappointed because uh, it looks, this is a sexy car, Robert, wouldn't you agree? Like this does look like a very good car exterior-wise, wouldn't you say? Yeah. It's not the most like oh my god eye popping design out, but it's not an ugly car by any means, and it's definitely a very good looking vehicle. You know, it's something that um that is kind of with these kind of not necessarily outlandish designs, but it's something that is kind of hit or miss. You know, people either love it or they or they kind of hate it. And obviously, I find um, um I follow I fall more into the former as opposed to the latter category. But okay, we got dumb. Yeah, everywhere. I tell you, I'm not the most experienced driver. I've only been driving since I was 15 and a half. But, <laughs> but I do know my way around when it comes to dealing with with idiots on the road. Whenever you come across an intersection, you need to always travel slow, like I just did, because there's always, always some idiot that thinks somehow, some way, there is no possibility of any other car, and the person tried to go through the intersection. But you know, your boy was thinking straight, thinking clearly, keeping him, keeping him cool with no heart attacks over here. Yeah, I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not even saying anything. <laughs> but you trust me, he, he trust me. But anyway, going back, I'm trust gonna, is a big word. <laughs> if you didn't trust me, you wouldn't be going on so many different <laughs> rides. With I'm me. supposed to. <laughs> straight from the hip himself. Come on, man. But uh, yeah, right. You do it because you want to as well. I you could, you could tell me. You could tell me no, but you don't want to. Like, I did. You, you enjoy my company. I did. You were like, no. What you mean no? What you mean no? Like, what you mean no? I'm like, come on, bro. I got work to do. Yeah. Okay. Up there, th twiddling your thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> but like I said, I dropped it in the Sport Plus mode, so we're gonna see a little bit. Drop it into manual too. Let's see what gear we in. Okay, we in we in first gear. Because you know, I just want to see and, and like that experience you just said yourself. Come on, man, bro. First of all, my car has like 200 horsepower more than this. Pretty sure, pretty sure, pretty sure I could handle a little 420 at all. Okay, okay. I'm like that mean. But anyway, before I was really interrupted, with this light turns, we're gonna give you guys a little a little pull and show you show you just a little bit of what this 420 that I is packing. Hopefully it's packing a little bit and show you what this ZF A C V transmission is packing because um like I said I have an E90 E92 335 I have the previous generation I had the 6AT six speed automatic transmission. This is the ZF A speed. So let me see what are those little two different gears is uh, popping about. You know, I gotta make sure the end. Oh okay, that shift was pretty that shift's pretty nice. This shift's fast. Damn! You see how the Boy, that's how a transmission is supposed to shift, boy. Woo! Wait, hold up, hold up. Did you just... You were talking about the comfort, and now you all of a sudden, you, you praising? You praising? <laughs> no, no I, was, I was praising. Oh. I was, shut up. Shut oh. up. No, no, time, no, time out. I was praising the transmission. You can't you can't sit here and tell me that transmission was not banging gears like it was no other. Nah, man, it's quick, bro. It's, what are you talking about? Did this, did this, Smooth. did this Sport Plus mode awaken a different little beast inside this little four-cylinder? Man, I mean, I, I'm the one driving, but how you feeling shocking right now, Robert? How you, how you feeling, how you feeling I mean, right I now? Feel that little. Yeah, it's not fast, but it, it's feeling... But it's, it is quick, like, it's like a little... 
yeah, it's, it's, it's deceivingly a little, it has a little spunk to it, you know. It's, it's not like breakneck speed, but it's getting a little fun to me right now, you know. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not gonna, let me preface this, this by saying I need a little bit more time to really um, take in what I'm experiencing. But like I said, the steering wheel is definitely, I feel it a little bit more artificially weighted. It's giving more me more feedback, but... I sound like I complain about you know the steering being artificially weighted, especially considering when my previous knowledge of it has been basically uh, spaghetti noodle loose. <laughs> and that, I think that's kind of like the best way to describe it. Like it's a very loose steering, then all of a sudden it becomes you know weighted like macho, kind of what I what, what I'm used to. But it, it's a, it's kind of a weird phenomenon. But like I said, I'm gonna do a little turn here, and so I can see um, you know what this is all about. See, just the steering. It's still not giving me enough feedback, but it's it's still something. But I'm loving the way this transmission shifts so fast. How does it shift so fast? It shifts as fast as my six um uh, six speed automatic transmission, and I have a transmission tuned in my car. It feels like it anyway. Imagine a four turbo. Oh my god, we're gonna have to tell me we need that one of those. <laughs> we did get one before. You did, you did, I didn't see it. Well, that was our way before you came oh. along, buddy. Okay. Hell what are you doing? What? Are you what? Man. What? <laughs> you, uh. <know. laughs> you look like a sucker. You could have just taken that light, boy. No, nah, I could have, but I actually, I actually did it for the video because I wanted the traffic to break up so I could do another, another pull, to be honest. No, I'm serious. That and I don't trust that driver Man, because he was be he was swerving into the lane and he was, and then he ran basically at red, but you know like I said we do a little. Bro, how does the transmission shift like this? What? 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 This transmission is is the entire car, and obviously like I said this does rev rev out to seven thousand RPMs, but the. Tra the turbo loses steam like at about 5,000, so you have to short shift to keep it in the power band. Remember, it is a measly two cylinder engine, people. You're not going to be expecting too much from this, but. Like I said, it's. That was a slight little incline right there. Like I said, it's not fast, but it's honestly kind of fun. What do you what do you think, Robert? It's it's honestly kind yeah, of fun. It's fun. I mean, if you can't get the 435 running for you know, go and you get this, you're gonna have a lot more fun. You know, you, you know, it's kind of like that mantra. You know, you can drive a driving a slow car fast is more fun than driving a fast car fast because when you have when you have a fat, let me explain what I just said. When you have a slow car and you drive it fast, you can feel every gear, you can feel everything. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're going fast, but not necessarily going fast. But if you have a fast car and you're driving it fast, especially on the public streets, there's only you can only go so far before you end, end up in jail. Oh, you mean like everybody on the Ferraris and everything? <laughs> there's 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 only so much you can do when you're in a fast car. You know, when you when you're in a fast car and you push the pedal down. In no in no time you're gonna be at speeds that you shouldn't argue, argue be on the road. And something like this, you push the pedal down, it's gonna take you longer. That's true. It's yeah. gonna take you longer to get there, but you get a little bit more enjoyment, a little bit more satisfaction out yeah, of it. That's true. And what I mean by that is you can experience a slow car driving it fast more. Most of the time. Now obviously if you take it to like a track or you know early morning canyon drive or something like that. It's something completely different but when you drive a slow car fast you are more capable of feeling it out and enjoying it for what it is as opposed to trying to drive a fast car fast in public roads especially in la where there's always traffic at any sort of human hour because either either you're gonna kill yourself and end up in jail or you're gonna end up in the back of someone else's car when you try and drive a, a fast car fast car too fast for or public roads on the video <laughs> Where you're gonna see where you do a little turn and then you can't be doing the car. So, so that's what I mean by that. Like I said, this is not a fast car, but it feels a little spunky. It has a little kick, and this transmission is amazing. This ZF ATV transmission makes this car. It shifts, at least in Sport Plus mode, ridiculously fast. Almost amazingly fast. Um, I wouldn't necessarily. Honestly, you know what? Because I had driven my friend's F80 M3 before. At least on upshifts, it 
really it's really crisp on those gears like it, I dare say that this transmission shifts nearly as fast as as um, an, an F80 F80 M3 these dual clutch transmission this transmission really shifts fast I don't really know a way to describe it other than maybe you guys being able to hear uh, me click this paddle and these gear changes just going in, in succession one after the other amazingly quick that's really fun i have yet to really drive another car besides my own that where i'm driving an automatic and the transmission shifts this fast and this crisp have you have you been noticing that like ha, did you realize how how quick this uh transmission yeah bro i'm shotgun what do you expect <laughs> no but i mean before you hopped in this vehicle though. No, because I don't like, you know, Joe ride the cars, you know. <laughs> Just like you said, your friend has an FADM3. I was maybe one of your friends has one of these. Who no, knows? well, I mean, I'm not going to tell him I'm, I'm going to drive it. But I have been... Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm kind of lost right now. I'm kind of, like, tired. Oh, <laughs> right. No, nah, but honestly, <laughs> nah, but honestly, though, no, I haven't. And I want to because I am considering I'm trying to get M3 still, but... Like you were telling me to go get an F80 M3, even though I wanted the E92 M3, because I like that V8, but you said it's just quick. But you know, it's just, it's not as good. Yeah. It, it, honestly, it you, gotta, you gotta drive them both. It depends on what you're looking for, honestly. Yeah, well, if you if you want that's pretty fun. newer technology, you want speed, straight line speed anyway, and you want something that, an M3 is an M3 to be honest, like there's, and each generation has its own special place. Mm -hmm. The E46 M3, the E46 M3, uh, this is behind me. The E46 M3 um, has a special place because it's a naturally aspirated inline six pushing 8,000 RPMs. That's fun. When I drove that car, that, that was fun. But the DCT, the um, SMG, sorry, not the dual clutch, that's the sequential manual gear back to the single clutch gearbox. That transmission, was outdated it was fun in that when you shift gears it was rocking you back and forth you felt the kick in the back and neck you felt all the things you'd want to feel but would you, would you want to do that on a day in and day out basis uh, that's um you know that's up that's up to be argued it's fun i i personally loved it but at the same time it's again it's not something that you may or may not want to feel on a day in and day out basis it's something it's something that's uh, you know up to one's own interpretation of what they want out of out of their vehicle. And you know, like I said, when I drove my friend's F80 M3, you know, this generation's M3, I haven't driven the E92 M3 yet, unfortunately. But the transmission was as fast as this on the upshifts, if not faster. But that same speed on upshifts was the same speed on the downshifts, which this does not have. It's, I mean, it's okay. It's not a dual clutch. Every gear in that car was just, right, you know, boat, boat action rifle type. Where it felt organic. He felt it locking the place. He felt it bang, hit the pedal, bang. Hit, 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 the, hit the, um, the paddle again, bang, next gear, bang, next gear. Like, there was literally milliseconds, completely imperceivable to human senses of when you hit that pedal, I mean, that paddle, and when that gear changes, you don't know it just hits into the next gear and that's a completely amazing feeling to me anyway some people don't like that but i appreciate the sort of technology that goes into it because when you click that pedal by the time your finger even releases it it's in the next gear and i think that's pretty cool and with this you know like i said it's see like that shifts incredibly fast to me especially for uh, a regular sport, sporty luxury coupe. The Mercedes transmission does not shift anywhere near this fast. The, yeah, the Lexus IS Escort transmission doesn't shift anywhere near this fast. And I feel that's what really hurts Lexus when it comes to sporty vehicles is that they don't offer, um, they don't offer a good enough transmission package with their car to make it really feel sporty. It feels. It's barely, it's just adequate enough. It's not engaging. Like, although this shifts fast, it still feels fun. Like, that's what makes this car fun. If the transmission shifts slowed, 
it would just be eh, you know it but it shifts so fast that to me it gives something that i haven't really felt in any other car before it's a four cylinder but yet dare i say it's at least enjoyable would i personally own it i still don't know i really don't like four cylinders i can't stand i really don't like the way four cylinders sound and you know that's that's just a personal taste for me like it's I really don't know what, how else to describe it other than okay, okay, mailman, Jesus. Damn. <laughs> but I really don't know how else to describe it other than the fact that um, it makes the driving experience a lot more fun. The Sport Plus uh, option in this vehicle definitely changes the car completely. In comfort mode, it feels like a almost like an Econo Box type car. It feels almost like your regular Accord or Camry. That's how mundane and boring it was. But when I popped it in the Sport Plus, it unleashed the little beast that's inside this little car. I can't even lie, it really did change it a lot to me. Did it would it change it enough to me to me to sit here and honestly say that wow, like four cylinders are the next thing? No. I, I, hell no. Absolutely not. I still don't like four cylinders. But this is the closest example that I've driven yet that where I can say there's still there is a place for them. And that coming from me is a big testament to what this car offers because uh, not that the two, not that the four cylinders and the Lexus IS 200T and the C250 were bad. It's just it, <laughs> no, because like I said, the C250 was fun to drive as well. Believe it or not, because memory goes back with, with the whole um, driving a slow car fast type thing mantra but i understood that was you know like your economy car your budget mercedes your friendly you know it, it it was that's what it that's what it's meant for you know but with bmw i have a whole different mindset in terms of what a bmw is supposed to offer in bmw i expect no less than a fun driving sporty vehicle off that that's what i expect from bmw i don't expect that from any other brand so i have extremely high expectations when it comes to bmws because I know what I want from BMW. I know what I specifically bought a BMW for, and I know what a BMW should offer. And to be quite frank, this offers a good amount of that. And that's all I can ever really ask for out of a vehicle is um, it's for it for it to be reasonably fun. And I think this is reasonably fun, but it is a four cylinder. And I'm not saying the neg is a four cylinder, I mean in a sense that it's not fast. It's okay, you can get around, you can still do decent enough maneuvers, and this is a pretty light vehicle. It's just a here under 3,500 pounds. But at the same time, it's missing, it's missing that grunt. Like I, especially since it's on a BMW, I'm missing that inline six, I'm missing that turbo, I'm missing the fuel that I get in my car. And this would be a really good car if it just would, this was more powerful, which is why they offered 435i and not 440i. <laughs> so, you know, like I said, this vehicle is available at Carlux. Would I recommend this vehicle? Honestly, yeah, I would. I would definitely recommend this vehicle if you're looking for something that's decent on gas mileage, a little sporty, and a little bit more affordable. Yeah, but. The caveat to that is if you can save up a little bit and um you know save like a well like five more g's and did yourself a 435 buy would i recommend that instead absolutely but i haven't driven 435 yet so i'm just going off of what the engine offers but again this vehicle is available at carlux shout out to superman rob shout out to study thank you guys so much it's been a pleasure it's your boy jamavi this is beast from the heart <laughs> i see you dan <laughs> Hey, my bad, man. I'm just like, <laughs> no, no, I'm no. Out of a food coma, man. <laughs> nah, I, I appreciate that. You, you, you getting used to it. You know, you, you be being my cool little cold pilot up in here. <laughs> like I said, this vehicle is available at Carlux in Inglewood, in Los Angeles, California. Once again, thank you guys so much for this opportunity. And, you know, thank you guys for everything that you've been, been able to offer me, especially you, Robert. Because you technically don't have to do this, but you do it anyway because, you know, you just love me that much. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'll see you in the next two weeks. So. <laughs> but with that said, again, this is Jamavi, it's Beast from the Heart. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially you, the viewers. 
You guys have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm out.